Hello everyone, this is Dr. Ray Self. Welcome to Self Talk. Today's show is a very interesting show. I'm interviewing Pastor Keith Hodges, who has a very powerful story about him and his wife, the early years of their marriage, how his wife suffered horrible uh, depression and anxiety, um, suicidal tendencies, and just a terrible story. And then in one weekend called an encounter weekend, she gets completely free. And so this is a story of a, of a book he's writing called Being Healed from Healing Depression and Anxiety, which is healable, but his passion, his story, his passion for saving souls and making disciples and defeating the works of the enemy is unparalleled. You're going to enjoy this show a lot. Hey, please don't forget to go to the website for the podcast. That's icmcollege.org slash self-talk. And what I need you to do is follow this show and give me a review that that helps us reach more people. When you do that, it, it boosts the ratings of the show. More people find the show. More people hear about the love of Jesus Christ. This is Dr. Ray Self. Thank you for listening. Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Ray Self. Welcome to Self Talk with me, Dr. Ray Self. Very excited about today's show. I'm sitting next to one of my, my best friends. Uh, this is Pastor Keith Hodges from Arab, Alabama. Hey, Pastor Keith. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Ray. Good to be with you today. I'm so glad you. I'm so glad you're with me. And usually, whenever you say Arab, Alabama, people go, "Huh." Where? <laughs> what? It's one of those <laughs> unique places that you don't hear about a lot, but. Uh... God's doing some good things there. So Arab, I guess you would say, is just a little south of Huntsville, Alabama, A little right? south of Huntsville, yes, sir. Just a small community, about 8,500 people, and uh, God is doing some amazing things there as a result of just some open hearts to him. Beautiful, beautiful country. I'm very blessed to usually go up at least once a year. Yes, sir. Uh, I get to come up to your church and minister there, and uh, it's one of my favorite places. Uh, folks, if you don't know, my, my father's family is from Alabama, just south of Arab, a town called Anniston, Alabama, maybe 50, 60 miles south, I think. And so I have some Alabama roots, and my wife kids me and says, every time I'm around Alabama people, my accent comes back. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like sweet home Alabama and a little roll tide to help you out there. So. <laughs> now, see, the, the roll tide I struggle with a little bit because uh, my, my family's Ole Miss, you know, hotty toddy, but uh, we'll forgive them for the roll tide. We'll forgive them for the roll tide. But this... Um, Arab, Alabama, it was a small community, but we have a major church that's doing an incredible impact. You have a campus in Arab and another campus in a little town called Holly Pond. Yes, sir. And just to kind of as a side note, I remember you, you were telling me about a vision you had that and it was the vision of Dollar General. Yes, sir. Yeah, the Lord told me uh, years ago, he said, uh, I want you to plant Dollar Generals, not Walmarts. And he said, every small community deserves a life-giving church. And so we just kind of made that about five years ago, our mission to begin to plant uh, churches in small communities and bring the hope of the gospel, the power of the gospel to change people's lives. And uh, so we planted our first campus a little over three years ago. And I've got a vision in a couple years for our next campus. And just believe in God, just to begin to infiltrate small communities with the gospel. And you said the vision of your church is you gave me three things. The so we're gonna we're gonna win souls, make disciples, and destroy the works of the devil. Those are the three things we hang <laughs> our hat on, and uh, we're just committed to doing what Jesus did, and uh, making a difference. Win souls, make, make disciples, disciples, destroy the works of the yes, devil. Sir. Yes, sir. I mean that that's what it's about, isn't it? That's absolutely what and it's I about. I even hope that this podcast does that. Yeah, and, uh, absolutely. It's so it's so exciting, and folks, this church uh, is just dynamic. When you go there, the anointing is just so powerful. Uh, you have a very uh, incredible congregation that love to worship the Lord. You do a lot of amazing things. You have a big Celebrate Recovery program, yeah, yes, I know, sir. as well. I've preached it. I've seen 200 people at Celebrate Recovery there before. <laughs> We've seen, yeah, seen God do a lot of great things. We definitely have a heart for our community and love reaching out outside the walls of the church and making a difference and kind of addressing those needs uh, that everybody's struggling with. You know, that's the power of the gospel is that it does address those needs. And there's so much we could talk about, but one thing I wanted to focus on was, um, amazingly enough, Pastor Keith and I have been together for about the last four days, yep. and uh, it's just, what I'm going to say is hard to say, but it's true, it's true. We just <laughs> rode our bicycle across the state of Florida. Yes, sir. We rode our bikes from the Atlantic Ocean to the Gulf of Mexico. Yes, we did. In four days. 
162 yeah. miles and uh, just an amazing journey together. And we did it, you know, praising Jesus all the way. Absolutely. But as in the last few days, Pastor Keith, you've been talking to me about a story, mm-hmm. a story with you and your wife, yep. an amazing story. Uh, and you're writing a book about this story. Yep. And part of this story has to do with this horrible disease and demonic affliction of depression yep. and anxiety that yep. almost killed your wife Absolutely. multiple times. And I have a heart for that because that horrible if you can call it, I mean, the American Medical Society calls it a disease. Uh, some people call it demonic oppression. All I know is that de- demonic oppression, yeah. but depression is deadly yeah. and anxiety, and it can destroy your life. And I suffered through that, and God delivered me. But your story with you and your wife is amazing, and you're writing a book about it. I'm writing a book, going to call it uh, Overcoming Anxiety and Depression, kind of our story to freedom. And uh, my wife, Kelly is her name. She's uh, she's one of my heroes of the faith because I saw her persevere and fight uh, through a 10-year battle of suicidal depression. Uh, so she grew up, like many people, unfortunately, in a very abusive home. Uh, she was sexually molested as a child. Uh, she saw trauma and abuse just repeatedly over and over in her entire family. Uh, and that was manifested uh, right after we got married and just entered the ministry. Uh, and she started having flashbacks, which led to her first suicidal attempt uh, as she uh, slit her wrist and tried to take her life. And so that began what would be a 10 year battle uh, that God brought us through by his grace with uh, so many challenges. And you're pastoring during this time, right? We're, we're pastoring. Weren't uh, you pastoring a Methodist church at this time? a small and Methodist then, church, yes sir. And then uh, you went from there to an independent, yes, so founded we, your own church. Yeah. But you're, you're, a, you're a senior pastor, a lead yeah. pastor during this entire time with a wife who's horribly being horribly oppressed attacked whatever you want to call yeah. it by this disease and i call it a disease yeah. um, which is a deadly disease yeah and i can't even imagine the pain and how difficult that might have yeah. been yeah it was it was definitely uh hands down one of the most challenging seasons of our lives it, it definitely has god took it as he does all things right and if we yield to him and allow the holy spirit to work and he has literally transformed our lives and created now a, a opportunity, a ministry for us to help literally thousands of people. And so you're, what's the, so you're writing a book yep. and the book's going to tell your, your story. Going to tell our story. And really the heart of the book is not just telling our story, but teaching what I just call transformational truths, uh, truths from the word of God that God used to change our lives. Um, uh, my wife, after a 10 year battle of severe depression, uh, three months before the Lord healed her and delivered her, she was in the psychiatric center. Uh, she came out of the psychiatric center after 12 days on, uh, she was taking 24, uh, prescribed pills every day. She was a walking zombie. Uh, I'll never forget the psychiatrist at the psychiatric center basically said, you know, here's your wife. He said, we've got her medicated enough, uh, where she should not hurt herself. And she was literally a walking zombie. And three months later, we ended up in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, in a couple of this, in a, in a home of this amazing couple that led us through what we now call an encounter retreat. It was uh, three days of just personal ministry uh, that God used to set her free. And literally in three days, I literally came home with a brand new wife. She was healed. She was delivered. She was a new creation in Christ. And uh, it, it was amazing. Three days after 10 years yep. of suicidal depression. Yep. And uh, I, I just say that with with awe because I, I, I've been there. I had yeah. the suicidal depression. And in three days through this encounter, yeah. you call it an encounter. We call it an encounter now. That's what we call it. Three days it. of an encounter with yeah. God yeah. and being ministered to, yeah. she gets free. Absolutely. Absolutely. It was amazing. We literally, we, we joke about it now, but it was it was 100% true. Uh, when we came home, uh, we, we fought like cats and dogs for six months. Uh, because we literally had to learn how to live together because she was a new woman. I mean, uh-huh. it was it was for 10 years she lived in this dark cloud of depression, and now she was alive. Uh, and uh, <laughs> she, she came out of the darkness into the light, and so we literally had to learn how to live together because our lives were totally different. So now she was alive and she got feisty, huh? She got feisty. Now she had an opinion, an idea, and a view. And, and, uh, so, uh, it was, uh, so uh, uh, it was it was amazing, though. I mean, I, she, she tells the story of coming home and driving down, uh, driving down our road, and she said literally houses that she had drove by for 10 years 
Uh, she said it was like she, she saw things she had never seen. The sky was really never so blue. The grass was never so green as, as uh, kind of as crazy as that sounds. But literally, her world was changed. And uh, as a result of that, uh, we began doing what we now call encounter retreats. And we do those twice a year. And we open those up to whosoever will can come. Uh, we've had over 1,600 people. Uh, in uh, now about 15 years of doing encounters that uh, have been changed and transformed. And uh, it, it's just amazing what God can do uh, through, through His, no, through his uh, gospel. Uh, just, just for clarity, tell our audience exactly what an encounter is. I know, I know basically uh, the, the people who are going through the encounter will yeah. come to the church, and you actually have dormitories we in do, the church. We yep. do, so we have they a place to house people, feed people. So they come in on Friday. Yeah. And it goes through Saturday. Yep, we yep we wrap up actually Sunday morning. Sunday our morning. last session. Yep. Sunday morning. So what's that like? So we, we, we kind of say it like this. An encounter is uh, an opportunity uh, to allow God to deal with the junk in the trunk. You know, we say everybody's got junk in the trunk. Everybody has hurts and pains and trauma from their past that unfortunately shapes our lives. And so when you deal with the junk in the trunk, it allows you to step into the future and the hope that God has for you. And that's really what happens through that Encounter Weekend. Uh, we minister in a lot of areas from things we call ungodly beliefs to helping people identify the lies that we believe about ourselves or about others or even about God. Uh, we deal with uh, sexual purity. One of the biggest open doors is, is that the enemy comes in uh, through many times uh, the choices and decisions, soul ties that are in our lives that we deal with. We deal with inner healing, dealing with the hurts that we've had, whether that be a father wound or a mother wound or be that you've went through a traumatic divorce, whatever's happened in your life, that your heart has been wounded. I'll never forget Kelly made this statement one time. She said, I wish I had a broken arm because at least people could see my pain. Oh. Uh, because she was so wounded on the inside because of the trauma and the abuse. Uh, she just said, I wish I had a broken arm so people could see my pain. Wow. And uh, so we, we minister on inner healing, and, and it's just amazing to see God begin to bring life to people. Uh, it all revolves around the finished work of Jesus. Everything that we do comes back to Jesus Christ being the answer, the solution, and, and the remedy for our, for our hurts and our pains. I wanted to say this, that for years I've, I've traveled around some of the churches that you're connected yeah. to, and I kept hearing this term, Man, I just went through an encounter. Yeah. I just went through an encounter. I was thinking, well, what's an encounter? <laughs> but it just changed my marriage. It changed my life. It set me free. Yeah. And I heard that, you know, for years. Yeah. And I, I actually, sometimes you'd have me up and I'd come in on the tail end of an encounter <laughs> and do a prophetic uh, teaching and, uh -huh. and start ministering prophetically to the people that came out of the encounter. But as time's gone on, I realize, I think I realize now more than ever how powerful and how life-changing these encounters are. Yeah. And your book's going to talk about that. Yeah. So I'm gonna, And your church is about that. Absolutely, yeah. So I, the, my, the heart of the book is, is, number one, I really want to just give an invitation to people. I want to invite people, everybody listen to this podcast. Uh, they can go to our website, libertychurchcampuses.com, and they can, uh, they can register for our next encounter, right, which will this. be coming up in, in the, uh, uh, February, I believe the end of the right, first of the year. Say the website again. It's libertychurchcampuses.com. Uh, and you can go there, and there's a encounter tab you can register, and I believe the last weekend in February will be our next encounter, and we'd love to have people come. And so the book is really about just, number one, I want to invite people to experience what we've experienced. You know how when you, when you experience God in an amazing way, He changes your life, you want everybody to experience it. Yeah. And then the other part of the book is really just to teach some of those basic truths, you know, uh, that transformed our lives and uh, so I share a little of our story, a lot of our testimony, a lot of truths from Scripture just to, to really empower people to walk in freedom. That's, that's so amazing. And folks, I've been up in this area. Arab is a beautiful area. There's mountains around there. Uh, there's a lake close to there called Lake Gunnersville. Beautiful area. Uh, some of the friendliest people yeah. on the planet. Yeah. It's a great place to go to, and you have housing at the church. We have housing at the church. Or you could find an outside place absolutely, to stay if you absolutely. want. But there is, because there's this lake and there's lodges on the lake. But uh, it's just a, it's a beautiful area to go to. Yeah, it's a beautiful area. It is. We live out but, of the country. But you can, but you can house. You have a dormitory. Yep. Uh, upstairs. I believe. Upstairs. That's upstairs. exactly right. Yeah, we can, we can house uh, fifty people, uh, and then of course we do have there's hotels in different places around us, and it is a beautiful place. Sits over about 15 minutes from Lake Gunnersville for all the, the bass fishermen out there that are listening. Uh, Bassmasters fishes the tournament. Hydra Fest comes through there. 
a lot of great things. It's just a beautiful place to be. Uh, and God, God's glory is really there. We, we believe that. You know, I've kind of fished a little bit. Actually, Lake Gunnersville is known as the best bass fishing lake in the world, over 900 miles of shoreline. Yeah, Huge it's, lake. it's amazing. Um, but the the encounter to get free, yeah. you know, we, we, we've been talking about things that, uh, that things in our life that open up doorways, yep. that open up, that give invitation for demonic uh, oppression yep. and for demons and for the devil to come in. Yep. And then you can close those doorways Absolutely. and you can and you can restore your soul and literally get changed Absolutely. And, and just in in a day and a half well friday night yeah all day saturday and of course sunday morning, sunday morning at, at church the church up. is amazing yep. you wrap up at church but it changes your life and i've often said this you look back at your past you go well you know i don't want to look back at my past but what i've said for years is there's things from your past that are in your present that are hindering your future. Absolutely. There's there's memories, there's beliefs, yep. there's ungodly beliefs, there's unforgiveness, yep. there's curses, there's schemes, there's yep. all kinds of stuff. You know, I've talked a lot about schemes, and they're in your past, but they're still affecting your present, Absolutely. which is stopping your future. Yep. One of my favorite quotes is a Joyce Meyer quote. She said, anything buried alive never dies. Hmm. And what happens is, is we have become experts at burying our hurt and our pain. Yeah. And, and we, we've buried it and we've ignored it and we've act like it doesn't exist. But the reality is just like you said, what's from our past is still living in our present and it's affecting our future. Yeah. And one of the things we'll deal with at that encounter is we deal with what we call five open doors. Just like you said, five open doors, five access points that Satan comes in to steal, kill, and destroy. And as you identify one of those is unforgiveness. Uh, and we talked just a little bit this morning about the power of unforgiveness, how unforgiveness really is an open door. I believe one of the biggest open doors in the lives of Christians, keeping them in bondage, like you said, under the oppression of the enemy, uh, where they're not walking in freedom. And for Kelly, unforgiveness was the root of her depression and anxiety. It was unforgiveness toward the individual that abused her. I remember one time she said, I want everybody in the world to get saved and come to Christ except for that person. Mm-hmm. They deserve to go to hell. And uh, that's a pretty good indicator of where your heart is. And and here's here's a statement. I'll just share this today. I, I think this this may be worth just uh, anything that I've said today. I think this will be the golden nugget. Uh, one of the things that Kelly and I recognize is she battled through that, is that her 10-year battle of severe depression was not rooted in the abuse and trauma that she suffered. The 10-year battle of severe depression was rooted in the unforgiveness that she held in her heart. She wasn't depressed because she had been abused. She was depressed because unforgiveness and bitterness had opened the door for the enemy to torment her mind and drive her into a dark, dark place. So to me, we were talking about unforgiveness this morning. That's a very powerful statement, what you just said. Hope you guys are listening to this. So unforgiveness, when you forgive, it's not saying, okay, what you did is okay now. Absolutely not. It's not okay. It's not okay. But it means I'm letting you go. Absolutely. I'm breaking the tie. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to hold it against you anymore. I'm going to let God handle you. Absolutely. And so I'm breaking the tie because one thing that I've counseled for years is when you have unforgiveness, you're still linked to that person. Absolutely. You are bound to that person. So forgiveness is not about setting them free. It's about setting you free. Absolutely. That's exactly what we say. We teach that principle. We actually teach three levels of forgiveness. And and the thing that the heart behind it is when I forgive somebody, forgiveness doesn't free them. They're still accountable to God. The person that abused Kelly is one day going to give an account to to God for the choices and decisions that he made. Right. Uh, But forgiveness frees me. When I forgive somebody that hurt me, when I forgive somebody that abused me, uh, all of a sudden I'm freeing myself from that sin, that hurt, and that trauma so I can actually begin to be healed and receive what God has for me. And part of our encounter retreat really is we do work through a lot of forgiveness. Uh, We teach what we call the five R's of ministry and we help people work through uh, basically five simple things that we use all weekend. And one of them is we have to learn how to release or forgive ourselves, right? We talked about that a little bit this morning. It's not enough for us just to forgive others uh, many times the, 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 the person we hold uh, in, in bondage is ourself. Yeah. And so we have to learn how to not only forgive others, but forgive ourselves. Because when I have unforgiveness in my heart, whether it's toward another person or even toward myself, that unforgiveness literally hinders me from receiving the work that God wants to do in my life. 
Yeah. Uh, and it opens the door for the devil to come in and he begins to beat me up, right? That unforgiveness becomes that open door through which Satan begins to bombard my heart and my mind with anxiety and worry and fear and condemnation and guilt and shame. And that dark cloud of oppression begins to well up over us. Yeah, for me, and I, that's, that's powerful stuff, Pastor. Thank you. For me, when I, when I have had unforgiveness, and you know, we've all had some unforgiveness yeah, yeah. in our, when I've had unforgiveness, it's like, I want to see that person punished. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I, I, would, I want to punish them. I, I'm not going to talk to you. I'm, not even, I'm going to make sure that you're punished. And then all of a sudden, I'm carrying that, yep. I'm carrying that poison. Yep. I'm drinking their poison. Absolutely. And I got that poison in me. Yep. And then I'm also, again, I'm, ta- I'm, I'm bound to that person. Yep. So when I make a choice, it's, it's not a feeling, folks. Yep. It's a choice. Absolutely. And I make a choice and say, Lord, help me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I forgive. Yep. I forgive. And you put in the person, then all of a sudden, I let it go. Yep. And I'm not, I'm not the judge and jury over Amen. this person right. anymore. And all of a sudden, I've got a release. Amen. And I'm free. Amen. And God deals with them, and I'm, I'm over it. Amen. And I'm free. Yep. That's, that's the first level of forgiveness is i got to forgive not by feeling because forgiveness is not a feeling. Yeah. We forgive by faith. Yeah. And, you know, the Bible says that, that God in Christ forgave us. Yeah. And so we just use this little phrase, I forgive others because God forgave me. Really is that simple. I forgive others because God forgave me. And, and I choose and Jesus to forgive. Warned us of, and Jesus told us to do that. Uh, he yeah. absolutely told us to do that. Yeah. And he tells the story of the, the, uh, the, 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 the manager over the steward who... Uh, he forgives the great debt, and then the guy goes and, and, and collects debt. And Jesus says, and the man was turned over to the tormentors. And then he says this, and so shall my heavenly Father do to you if you do not forgive from your heart. And that's really, it's not that God is tormenting us, but that unforgiveness opens that door to every tormenting spirit of the enemy. And it begins to come in, and before you know it, you'll find ourselves in these places where we're living in bondage. Uh, you know, I saw Kelly from suicidal thoughts to panic attacks, uh, to anxiety, to social anxiety. Uh, I mean, it was uh, for six months, she would come to church and sit in the balcony with our sound team uh, because she couldn't, uh, the anxiety of just being in a group of people was more than she could handle. Uh, and just seeing all those things that she had to work through uh, and seeing God in literally three days, set her free and heal her and deliver her that. And then there's a process, right? A process of now, now I've got to walk out my Yeah, you got to walk out what you, and you're Exactly freedom. right. And, and, and we do that also. We have a follow-up process where we actually help people walk out that freedom. And uh, and it's just amazing. But your book, the name of your book again, you're right. It's Overcoming Anxiety and Depression. It's a simple title. Yep. It's going to kind of walk through all this process. And that's and uh, you have an expected date for you to finish this It, it will probably be. My goal is the spring of the year next year. So I'm okay. in the process. I've got another book that's hopefully going to be released at the first of the year, and this one will be my next one. And they'll be able to get uh, this on Amazon. Should be able to get, yep, they'll be able to get it on Amazon. It'll be available on Amazon, and it'll be available through ebook also. So uh, it'll, it'll be out there. Another thing that we brought up this morning, too, and thank you for that yeah, thank the you. ebook, and um, thank you for that, is forgiving yourself. Yeah. Because... What I've seen a lot of Christians do is that they, they, they get where they're okay with forgiving others, mm-hmm. but they hold this shame, condemnation. Yeah. Uh, they have a they have an internal shame, internal condemnation. I've seen some Christians even have a, a self hatred toward themselves that is hurting them. It's, it's yeah. like, well, I can forgive you, but I can't ever forgive myself for how I reacted to yeah. you. And I've even noticed people have suffered alcoholism yeah. and drug addiction. It's like, okay, well, I've forgiven all these people who hurt me, but I can't forgive myself for the things I did. And that's just as deadly, not being able to forgive yourself. It may actually be more deadly uh, than the unforgiveness that we have in our hearts toward others uh, because it ends up being this inner poison uh, that we drink every single day of our life. And, And what happens is if I have unforgiveness in my heart toward another person, um, that definitely affects me. It opens the door to the enemy, um, and it affects my relationships. But when I have unforgiveness in my heart toward me, that affects every relationship because now that poison that I hold in my heart is is spewed out really, unfortunately, on the people around me that I love the most. And it comes out, right? And then it creates it creates a vicious cycle because I have this self-hatred in my heart, and then I end up saying and doing things that I really don't want to do to the people that I love and care about. I end up hurting people, whether that's through addiction or through violence or just through anger and outbursts. And then it just creates more shame and more guilt, and it really creates a vicious cycle. 
So if we don't deal with the junk in the trunk, which you said earlier, what happens, and this has been my experience as a counselor, this stuff we're holding inside, and especially men, we think, you know, we got it under control. Yeah. There's an old expression, you know, my dad used to say, son, you got to suck it up, boy. Yeah. Suck it up. You hold it in. Hold yeah. it in. Well, you're holding it in, but it's manifesting in your, your Absolutely. actions. You know, you're not talking about it. You're not dealing with it, but your behavior is showing it. Yeah toward other people and toward and you're, you you're sabotaging your life absolutely because you've never really dealt with the the whatever's going on the unforgiveness in your mm-hmm. heart the self-hatred self-rejection carrying the condemnation and shame everything god doesn't want you to do and so many times you set all these other people free in your yeah. life but you never set yourself free and there and then you got the stuff all locked up and, and nobody really knows but they do know because your behavior is manifesting absolutely, and it's manifesting through your behavior with unreasonable reactions yeah. and actions toward other people. Yeah. Jesus said, "Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks." Hey, right? Here you go. Yeah. And and the greatest commandment is to love God, right, with all our heart, mind, yeah. soul, and body. Yeah. And the yeah. second commandment is to love your neighbors yourself. Right. And if I don't love myself, I'm gonna have a hard time loving my neighbor. Uh, and if my heart is full of shame and guilt and condemnation because of unforgiveness toward myself, that spews out, and it does. It ends up affecting the people, really, that we love the most. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's so tragic to see that happen because it does create that vicious cycle that drives many people deeper and deeper. The more I fail, the more I feel like a failure, the more I, um, I, I, I react out of anger or frustration, the more I feel that condemnation, and it really does drive us into a dark hole. It feeds it. You, it you, feeds it. it. It's, it's a self. You know, we call it a cycle of death. Oh, cycle of death. Wow. Wow, and it really does. It really does. Uh, really does work that way in our lives. So you have the unforgiveness. The unforgiveness is creating these actions, yep. and these actions are just recycling, yep. and you're spiraling. You're just you're just in a vicious circle. Exactly and right. You're and creating you more shame and condemnation. More and, shame and more condemnation, and it drives you deeper and deeper, and uh, and it hurts more and more people. You end up being isolated and separated, um, and it really is detrimental to our to our health and our spiritual. Ability, you know, God's called us to be a light in the darkness yeah. and to reach others. And if I'm living with condemnation and guilt on the inside because of unforgiveness, uh, it, it limits me from not only enjoying God but being a light for Christ. Amen, amen. It's good stuff. One one thing that 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 I teach is, you know, we're taught to love unconditionally. Yeah. You know, three types of love. I love you because, All right. or I love you if, All right. or I love you. <laughs> no because, right. no if. I just love you. Well. Sometimes with ourself, what we do is we love ourselves conditionally. Yeah. We love ourselves when we're doing everything right mm-hmm. and, and we, we're doing everything good, but then we sort of hate ourselves whenever we fail. Yeah. And so I've, I've over the years, I've noticed a lot of people have trouble loving themselves unconditionally. Yeah, they love themselves conditionally. Now, you can love your child yeah. unconditionally. Mm-hmm. No matter what your child does, you got a yeah. son or a daughter, no matter what, you got two daughters, no yeah. matter what your daughters do, Jessica yeah. or Samantha, right. whatever they do, I don't care what they do, you're still going to love Absolutely. them no matter what. Right? Absolutely, yeah. But when it comes to ourselves, no, our, yeah. our, our love is based on performance yeah. and That's based exactly on right. conditions. Yeah. And we got to learn to let that go. We, we definitely have to learn to let that go. Again, all those things become a trap, right? They become this cycle of death that puts us in this spiral that uh, really uh, separates us from the very thing. What's crazy, it really separates us from what we want. We, you know, we want to love people. We want to be loved. And we want to show that love, but we uh, we get caught in that trap. And so the good news of the gospel, why I mean you're here today and why our lives are, uh, why we're able to hit, sit here and talk about this is because we've experienced the power of God and the good news of the gospel that can uh, Jesus can break that cycle. We, we say you can take the cycle of death and with a couple uh, spirit-filled, intelligent decisions, you can turn it into a cycle of life that will begin to bless you and uh, do amazing things in your life. You know, that that is amazing. And, and I want to tell you, the listeners, uh, you know, this whole podcast is it's not here just to promote you going to ARAB Alabama, <laughs> but I, I kind of wish you would. But I will tell you this, every person I've ever met, and I've met a lot of people who have been through these encounters, yeah. They call it an encounter. That's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday morning deal. Their lives are changed. Absolutely. They're completely different people. Yeah. I mean, you see a person going in one way, coming out a different yeah. way. It also talks to you about biblical principles and what, what the Lord can do. And I'm a lot, I don't know if I was as bad as Kelly, but I had suicidal thoughts. Yeah. I had blackness. I had depression from the time I was 16 to I was 44 years wow. old. And um, I, I was... I was strong enough to function most of the time, yeah. but underneath it all, I felt dead and unalive and everything else. And I know with me, 
it was the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yep. When I finally got baptized in the Holy Spirit, Amen. started learning some things, and also was very blessed to find some really great Christian counselors Amen. and a lot of prayer, a lot of deliverance, and a lot of learning. You know, I, I was Amen. able to get free, but I have a heart. Let me tell you something. Depression and anxiety is it's it, to me it's worse than cancer uh, it is, is it's a it's a, it could be a death sentence yeah, it is but your book's going to show people it's going to show free people. from that it's going to show people. and maybe you're not depressed but you've got other issues Absolutely. in your life yeah. that you have stuff from your past that's in your present yeah. that's stopping your future absolutely and and that's the heart behind the book is to really share those transformational truths to equip people and empower people to walk in freedom uh, cuz here's what i love Hurt people hurt people, which is there sad. You that grieves our heart. But here's what I know to be true. Free people, free people. Ooh. When you get set free from the hurts and pains in your past, you deal with the junk in the trunk, all of a sudden, free people, free people. And every person that reads my book and finds freedom is going to bring freedom to other people, which is what excites me. Yeah. And that's what that's what stirs me up and gets me out of bed like you every day, Dr. Ray, because we get to make a difference in people's lives who can make a difference in other people's lives. And that's that's the power of the kingdom of God. And what Jesus really came to do, Amen. And I, yeah, I'm, I'm like you. I love to teach. I've, I've taught and I've counseled for years. Um, but I, I do like this. You know, it's just interesting. We were yeah. talking about this. I just finished a course called Counseling Personality Disorders. Yeah. And so we were talking about, you know, you know, OCD and borderline personality yeah. disorder, narcissism. And I'm doing all this teaching about all the medical terms and all the scientific explanations uh -huh. and all. The, uh, the way they say you get free and how you treat this. And it's still, when you get to the bottom line, it's going to be the power of the Holy Spirit, Absolutely. the name and the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, Absolutely. the finished work on the cross is really the only thing that's going to set that's you free. You thing. can call it whatever you want, yeah. but the only thing that's going to set you free yeah. is the finished work of Jesus Christ, what he's done for you yeah. on the cross. Amen. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Ooh, let's preach it. We're Amen. Going let's free. preach it. That's some good <laughs> stuff. We say it like this, Dr. Ray. We say the world only has painkillers. But Jesus offers total healing. Yeah. And, and that's what the yeah. world, you, you go to the yeah. world, and, and I'm thankful. The, the Lord used doctors, and he used counselors, and he used psychiatrists. Sure. yeah, he does. And, and he used them, and he used them in Kelly's life. They sustained her, but God healed her, and he brought her out. And they delivered. sustained they her. They but sustained God. her, but God healed her. I mean, God yeah. used the doctors, the medicine, the counseling, the psychiatry, all those things God used to sustain her. The, the Lord gave me the scripture out of Proverbs, and a multitude of counselors, there's safety. And God used those counselors and those doctors to create a safety net for Kelly till she could come to a place of faith where she could receive the healing that God had for her. Um, and, and, it, and it changed her life, changed my life, and uh, changed our family and our church. And we are who we are today because of the greatness and goodness of God. And so I'm so thankful just to be here with you today, sir. I'll know this. I'm thankful to be ready to close. And uh, I just remember some of the first times I, I go up to your church and these guys that come up and greet me and hug me and, you know, and just that you just see the love of God all over this guy's face, you know, be a young man. And I get to the door of the church and say, Hey, are you, you're a race out. Hey, give me a hug. Give me a hug. And turns out this guy was a drug addict for years. <laughs> yep. For years. For he, years. he was a drug yep. addict on the street. He was a drug dealer. A probably. Drug dealer, <laughs> probably a drug dealer. And now I'm looking at this teddy bear with the love of God all over their faces, yeah. giving me a hug. Then I, I meet them all over the church, and they're yeah. all free, yeah. loving God, and perfectly normal, healthy, Holy Spirit-filled warriors right. for Christ all over the church. All over the church, yeah. I mean, you were we, a drug addict? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's amazing to see that the transformation, uh, as you yeah. said, you know, Celebrate Recovery is a big part of what we do. And yeah. and, 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 and part of our success there is is that we you know, uh, create an atmosphere for people to come in and experience God, yeah. the power of the Holy Spirit, love of Jesus. And uh, so it, it is amazing what God can do. Okay, folks. So this is Pastor Keith Hodges. He's the lead pastor of Liberty Church, Arab, Alabama, and Holly Pond, Alabama. And the website again it is, is uh, libertychurchcampuses.com. And you can find me on Facebook. I have a, a page called PK and K. Pastor Keith and Kelly, PK and K, and uh, we share uh, truths on life, leadership, and legacy, and really just desire to help people and equip people to serve God. So if you want to come to the encounter, you go to the website. Yep, absolutely. Click on the encounter tab, and we'll get you connected and hooked up. All right. One more time. Website? Is libertychurchcampuses.com. Libertychurchcampuses.com. Well, that's great. Well, let's close in prayer. You want yes, to sir. pray for us? I, I will be honored. Okay. So, Father, I thank you today for the freedom and the grace of your son, Jesus. I thank you for every person listening today to this podcast. And I pray for those 
that may be battling with anxiety and depression. I pray for the grace of God and for the Spirit of God to minister to them. Lord, I thank you right now for bringing light into the darkness. And I thank you for the seed and the spirit of hope that fills our heart. You are the God of all hope. And so, Lord, I just declare right now that the hope of God would abound in their hearts. I thank you for breaking every chain. I thank you for healing every hurt. And I thank you for drawing us unto yourself. And so, Lord, today we honor you, we bless you, and we worship you, Lord, as the one who is and was and forever shall be. And we ask it all today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, thank Pastor you, Keith sir. Hodges. All right. Love you. Love you. I can't say roll tide, though. I haven't got, <laughs> I haven't got there yet. <laughs>Hey, this is Dr. Ray again. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed today's show, and maybe you'd consider going up to Arab, Alabama, to one of those weekend encounters that Pastor Keith was talking about, especially if you're suffering from depression, anxiety, addictions, alcoholism, drug addiction. Um, they, they do a powerful work up there. Also, remember, we're in our website, our podcast website, icmcollege.org slash self-talk. We have all kinds of stuff there. We have my books are on there. Also, we have three different courses that you can purchase for a $35 donation. These are college level courses. The course we're promoting this month is called School of the Spirit, which is all about the Holy Spirit and how to move and flow prophetically and how to grow and be imparted in the prophetic and how to mature in a prophetic. It's a six lesson course. It's a $225 course that you can get for a $35 donation, which helps us continue this show. So consider doing that. Check out my books. You know, I really appreciate you listening to Self Talk with Dr. Ray Self. All I want to do is just glorify Jesus and set captives free and um, give you some real answers. So thank you for listening, and um, I just pray God's blessing and favor on you and your family. See you later. See you next week.